Okay. It's my pleasure to introduce Peng Yin Yang, who will talk about equity distribution of expanding translates of curves. Okay. Thanks for organizers and uh, thanks for coming. Um, the topic is equity distribution. So we have G, this semi simple <coughs> connected real algebra group. Non compact cap. And we uh, have a lattice. Necessary arithmetic. Right. And we have a homomorphism of algebra groups from the modified group to G and the uh, highest multiplicative one parameter subgroup. And also we have a curve phi on G, which is real analytic. Okay, and I uh, have a projection from G to G gamma. So we can push forward the limit measure on zero one interval. this equal dispute. This is the hard measure. What? So we want to put some condition on the curve such that uh, the equal distribution holds. So the background that we can take the expanding for spherical subgroup Mm. 
is bending horse here and uh, it is converged to heart. And this is by Malgulis uh, uh, banana, right? We can call it uh, thickening argument. Instead of uh, push the whole expanding heart sphere, we just take the curve. Okay. And want to ask uh, when, when you get a good distribution. Okay, so this is the background and, uh, and the motivation from number theory. So this is another motivation from the fountain. So Davenport and Schmidt defined the following notion. So you take a vector in R N. We call the vector Richelet improvable. So, should be improvable if there exists some uh, mu between 0 and 1. And uh, so that for all n large enough, consider the system of inequalities. to approximate n real numbers simultaneously with the same denominator q. And uh, this error and this is the size of q. Okay, so this holds for some g, g, n, and uh, q, some non-zero integer. <coughs> okay. So if mu equals 1, this is Dirichlet's theorem. So then this holds for any real vector. But so when mu is strictly less than 1, then the set of improvable, po improvable points in Rn has the big measure 0. So this is a theorem of uh, double important Schmidt. OK. So now, Instead of the whole Rn, we can take a real analytic curve in Rn and uh, or real analytic subvariety and ask the question that the set of improvable points is it of the big measure zero if the curve is generic enough. Okay. <laughs> so then we're left to consider that problem in the following specific setting we take gamma and g to be as a n plus 1z and as a n plus 1r and so we can take a t so t is a multiplicative uh, parameter So u plus is uh, spanning the power sphere, uh, spherical subgroup. So, so we identify with Rn. And uh, so if you have a curve, okay, 
you regard it as a curvy U plus. And uh, then it's uh, the embedded into your chi. So then you got a curve that. that. Okay, so. By some. <coughs> argument using Danny's correspondence. Mm. So we can. Say that if you have liquid distribution, this will imply that so Danny's correspondence uh, Bs is not usually improvable for the big almost every S. So set point set of improvable point on this curve has little <laughs> measures here. So this is why we are interested in proving equal distribution. You know, we can get this kind of uh, result. Okay, let's just do one shot. So you have the real analytic. And also, we can find the motivation from geometry, so hyperbolic case. Uh, so, G is so N1, so correspond to this. to be uh, T, T minus. So now, associated to AT, there's a parabolic consists of elements which is the weakly stable parabolic. So this is general definition, and uh, in this case, it's uh, star, 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 so zero. Okay. Okay. One and one, one and one. <coughs> okay, so it's the boundary of Asia.
Okay, so, so one could observe that if you modify a curve by another curve in P, meaning you take product and uh, then you flow by AT. By the definition of P, if mm, the original one got equal distributed and the new one will also get equal distributed. So you can one could pass to a curve on G map P. So there is an obvious obstruction coming from lower dimensional subgroup. So if you have H, which is some S O M one with M less than N, the subgroup of G and uh, G element such that. Gamma is first. So totally ge totally geodesic some manifold. <coughs> okay. And uh, if your curve is here, then you flow it will get actually get equals with here, not in the full G. Okay. So one should uh, avoid this case if you expect the equal distribution. And also the theorem I shot says that this is the only obstruction. So suppose that the image of phi is not containing G, so we call this stuff for any H G the pair satisfying star, then you have different distribution. So these two are the main motivation for studying the general case, for general sense simple chi. And uh, okay, back to the Delphine approximation. So this improvable is defined here for vectors, and uh, one could uh, also generalize Dirichlet improbability to matrices with uh, almost the same definition. Now instead of taking Taking a number q, you take a vector, and uh, <coughs> you know, it looks exactly like this definition. Okay, and uh, one could also ask uh, <coughs> for a curve in the space of m by n matrices um, whether the set of points which are Dirichlet improbable is of the big measure zero. So, what condition should you put on the curve? So the question now we're looking at is for digitally improvable, and uh, you can also ask for extremality. So instead of improving, put the coefficient there, as we see mu here, you can try to improve the exponent. So I mean the minus y and n. Okay. So uh, I Brial, Rosenzweig, and uh, the set C look at this problem and they found uh, the, the obstruction comes from pencils which we are now going to define so plus many and pencils so 
grass canyon and plus in. Prime tries this. Uh, M-dimensional linear subspaces of uh, R and plus N. And uh, so why do we look at this? Because for M plus N matrices, space of N plus N, N times N matrices could be embedded in real grass man. So yeah, there's an intrinsic definition, but uh, it can also be put very explicit. So you have a matrix and uh, you look at this matrix so it has n rows and uh, n plus n columns <coughs> and you take the n row vectors and they are linear and independent so you take a span of row vectors Extended the matrix, okay, and you get uh, m dimensional subspace of m plus n r m plus n. Okay, so now we define Hansons. So it's, uh, the definition is from Real, Real, Rosenzweig. No, I think it's a standard notion. I mean, the way we phrased it in this paper, uh -huh. we reformulated it for what we need, but the pencil is it's a general notion, it's not our definition. Uh, okay, so it's a uh, way the success version. But it, it was just to fit the arms. Yeah, and uh, also I changed it change the data also to fit into my definition, so <laughs> I change it again. But uh, yeah, later it will go into some bigger picture. <coughs> okay, so given a real vector of space, that is the proper subspace of uh, R plus n and uh, an integer R which is at most n. So define cancel P so W R to be three. So I'm making the cross man. Such that the dimension of the intersection is at least R. Okay. And uh, <coughs> recall the pencil constraint if this inequality holds. So the dimension of W over R is less than M plus N. Yeah. yeah, so actually, pencils could be generalized to um, wider class of varieties called sugar varieties. So it's also called sugar cycle. So now I give the definition. So back to the general setting, which is simple, so on. A 
you remind you this. Okay. So we take a maximum R three parts containing the image array. is as before. Okay. Piece of it. Okay. And the B is a minimal parabolic such that. You have this inclusion. So now we can look at the wild group of the pair of GT. It's defined by the defined to be a normalizer module of the centralizer. Also, wild group of the pair of PT. And we can take Look at the coset, <coughs> okay, the quotient. So, in fact, uh, there is a stratification. So you can write G as the disjoint union of cells Okay, so these are open in, in their closures. Okay, so now we can define sugar variety. Sugar variety is a variety looks like uh, this. So what is XW? So where W is in WG, G is in G, and XW is the closure of the cell. So there is a partial order on this set uh, WP. And when we take the closure, we take this joint union of uh, all the lower cells, so it's a stratification. <coughs> okay, so then you get the standard sugar variety and it's parameterized by elements in this W upper P, and then you can translate by elements in G to move it around. Okay. So this super variety generalizes the pencils over there. <coughs> so the grass manning case is a special case of super variety, as we will talk about later. And uh, we can also generalize the definition of constraint. So uh, 
sugar rising. Is unstable. With respect to eighty. So it's uh, one parameter in which uh, whose uh, image is in the positive wild chamber. <laughs> so such that. Okay, so it has nothing to do with the G here, only depend on W. So for W, you can find some delta such that this happens where uh, this is a positive definite. linear form. Okay. Yeah. So let me give some examples. And let's see what this says. So the first uh, example is that G is S R and plus one R. And uh, A T is N minus one minus one. Okay, and B is uh, lower triangular. And uh, P is uh, So in this case, the Schubert varieties are mm -hmm. and and it's less than okay. and all these are unstable. Okay. So yeah, this gives an explanation of a uh, Schatz condition that the uh, curve is generic if it's not containing any proper phi. So you embed it, so u plus is can be embedded as an open subset of this g minus p, and uh, so then the obstruction you projectivize it becomes uh, linear subspaces of this projective space. Isn't delta a character? I mean, isn't this a pairing of characters and co-characters? Uh, it's, uh, it's a co-character. Oh, yeah. yeah a, a is a co-character. Yeah, and delta is a yeah, co -character. this is a... Yeah. Um, so, which is defined to be co-character stuff. Yeah, because A is a co-character of T. Yes. And uh, you can, you, by definition of wild group, so the wild group acts on that. So, you, by conjugation. Okay. And uh, yeah, the second example is more, maybe more helpful. So it's the first uh, non trivial example. So we look at the Grassmannian 2 2 case. So Grassmannian 2 4. 
and take this singular flow. So now the p is star zero star. So B still take the lower triangular this far up. And uh, so G minus P is uh as many two fourth. So this prime transits P one and P three. Projective lines in projective space. So plane is in four space and you project lines. Okay. And the wild group is a symmetric group S4. And the wild group T is S2 cross S2. So you take the <coughs> quotient. The quotient is not a group, so it's a set. So how should we think of this? So this is uh, 1, 1, minus 1, minus 1. So this is 1, minus 1, minus 1, 1, and so on. So these are positions of 1s. Okay. And uh, so there are six sugar varieties. Picture showing the stratification. Okay. So, what is G left modulo P? So, we can think of uh, taking an element in G, you take the first two rows and you take the plane spanned by the first two rows. This is how this is identified with this cross mapping twofold. Okay. So if I don't write, then the entry is zero. So we have these six types of sugar varieties, and now I want to ask the question, uh, which of those are uh, unstable? And I'm still confused by this claim. The co-character lattice is invariant by the value group. So why does it matter if I translate A by W? I mean, you can always translate delta by w, right? <laughs> Instead. No. So, I mean, it can be conjugated to some other element in the co character group. It's no longer in the vibe chamber. Oh! That's yeah. <laughs> so you get out of the vibe chamber. Oh, I see. Well, I see. Oh! It's, uh, yeah. Oh, so gamma star is a notation for a vial chamber. <laughs> Sorry. No, uh, no, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Gamma plus, yes. Okay. Yeah, you... Uh, you face a positive vial chamber such that it's compatible with B. Yes, you, you fix the posi notion of positivity. Yeah, right? yeah, you fix the notion of positivity such that B consists of all the negative, yeah, no, negative roots. Yeah. Okay, no, that's <laughs> Gamma plus and not gamma star. It's gamma plus, yeah. Gamma plus. So goes into the positive version. Okay. Thank you.
So, so in the Lie algebra, we have the positive wire chamber is or maybe the closure of the positive wire chamber. <coughs> and the sigma here is zero because we are in special linear. Okay. So for W W parameters by IJ we have so we just take uh, the bilinear form to be the inner product so So say if W is 2, 3, then this guy is T2 plus T3 minus T1 minus T4. And because the summation is 0, so in order to make that positive, you only need the T2 plus T3 positive. So then uh, let's see if this is possible for different values. So if W is 1, 4, T1 plus T4 is positive. So I think that is possible because we can simply take uh, T1 to T3, T4 to the uh, 3, 1, 3, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1. Okay, also W2, 3 corresponds to the inequality T2 plus T3 is positive. So can we find such a delta? The answer is still yes. Okay. So however, if you take two four, then it's uh, impossible. You cannot no longer find such uh, delta. So because t two plus t four, if it suppose it's positive, then this will imply t one plus t three is also positive. Then this contradicts the fact that the summation is zero. Okay. The sum is zero. Okay. So now we know that uh, the bottom four are unstable, while the top two are not unstable. just by definition. So this means unstable sugar variety really generalizes constraint cancels. Okay, now we are able to state our main results. So G, some simple, connected, <coughs> and uh, non-connected type. 
gamma lattice, A is the uh, multiplicative round parameter, and B is the uh, real analytic curve as before. Uh, okay. So first we look at non escape of mass. Theorem to myself, such as suppose image of P is not contained in any possible super ready. Any weak start limit of push forward of the big measure, the flow on the curve is a probability measure. So in other words, there is no escape of mass to infinity. <laughs> okay, so this uh, yeah, generous Shah's theorem on the cases uh, SLN and uh, SLN1. So in SLN1, so since it's real rank 1, Super variety only is either one point or the whole space. One cell curve is not trivial, it's not containing one point. So you don't really see this obstruction. So in that in the SLN one case, once the curve is um, non-trivial, then you push then there's no escape of mass. So you don't really see this in right one case, real right one. Two things false, one, same as there. Two. So recall that in the hyperbolic case, we want to throw away some HM, so lower dimensional. So we want to do the exact same thing here. So if you have a pair F, G, F is a subgroup and G is a group element. So F contains the flow and uh, it's proper. It's called subgroup of G, G is element in G, and uh, F, G, gamma is closed. And of finite form. Okay, then we have equal distribution. So this is uh, for this because we want to make sure you have nice state of mass. And for this, suppose your curve is already contained here. Then you flow it, this P doesn't matter, so it's really stable. And uh, the flow is absor absorbed in this group F. 
So then it got stuck in this so, manifold. It will not carry because you screwed it. So naturally you want to throw away this. And uh, the film says this is enough. Okay. It's only obstruction. <laughs> Questions on the statement? Okay, good. Last few minutes, let me say a few words on the proof. <laughs> so, the proof pretty much follows the approach of Nimish Shah using unipotent rigidity. So, when you stretch your curve, you get your body endurance, okay? And uh, then there's a standard linearization technique. Linearization. So you look at uh, some finite dimensional representations, which are the exterior products of the adjoint representation of G. And uh, the dynamics in the representation will tell you the dynamics in the homogeneous space. So we're reduced. So this part is standard. And uh, what's new is this k <coughs> representation and uh, you take any non-zero vector the uh, space P so there you exist delta naught in gamma plus <coughs> and uh, G naught so group element such that So AT is diagonalizable, so in V it becomes into plus part, zero part, and minus part. And we're interested in the subset of G which moves a fixed vector V into the minus part of AT in the representation. Okay, and we have a description of this set. So it's contained in, it's not always equal. It's contained in So we see this guy again. That explains why we define the answer which we write. How do we prove the key lemma? So the strategy is to choose the alternate to be such that the convergence this set is um, not empty, mm -hmm. then you know that there is there is this such uh, lambda naught which brings a vector to zero and uh, we can define a speed. So there are different uh, one parameters which brings your vector to zero. So how do we define a speed? So if you 
if it brings your vector to zero, you decompose your vector according to the eigenspace of, uh, of with respect to that flow, and uh, the you get uh, negative uh, exponents, and you take the largest uh, negative exponent that gives you a speed. So say a t v is sigma t to i v i. See, v is sigma v i. These are eight eigenvectors. And uh, if this converges to zero, you can only have negative i's, and you take the largest i. So that gives you the speed. And uh, by a theorem of Kampf, the uh, since you take different uh, one parameter and uh, the one parameter have different lengths, you have that binary form and that gives you a length of uh, one parameter. So you want to divide that uh, largest i by the length of the one parameter. You normalize it. And the theorem of Kampf says uh, it's most rapid. So the highest speed is achieved for some delta naught. Okay. And the camp's original um, motivation to study this is to uh, study geometry invariant theory. So in geometry invariant theory, if you want to have a variety x, say affine, embedded into some affine uh, linear space v and the uh, gx linearly, and you want to take quotient. So the quotient uh, does not, in general, make good sense. I, I mean, it's uh, not a good variety, and you want to throw away some bad points. And uh, those bad points are that so when you take a g orbit and take closure, it contains r. You want to throw away those. And there's a criterion called the Hilbert, Hilbert Manfred criterion saying that uh, if g orbit through a vector, um, the closure contains the origin, then you can find the one parameter which brings your vector to approach the origin. So if g brings your vector close to the origin, then the one parameter does the job already. And you can further quantify that, saying that you have different one parameters, which gives you a different speed that you can uh, maximize that. And by that, he sh can extend the, the previous Hilbert Mufford for arbitrary closed fields to arbitrary uh, perfect field. Because you first work with uh, arbitrary closure, and then you look at the Galois action. Galois action does not change the exponent how could it be. So then the maximum one is the good one. It uh, has to be Galois environment, so it's rational. That's his original motivation, and uh, it has uh, another application in a completely different field. So it's very, very interesting. Okay, let's thank the speaker. More questions? Can you say something if condition B is not satisfied? Can you show convergence to some other limit? Uh, yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, I tried to do induction, but uh, gauss stacks at some stage could not go down because of, I don't know how to get the first condition for the lower one. But you think it's true, but you're not able to prove it? Is that what you're saying? Yes. I, I, I don't see it's not true. I don't know it's true or not. But uh, I tried to prove, uh, but uh, I didn't uh, make it. Okay, um, another question? Okay, let's thank you.